Hi Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything that used to be called Yard of Random Books when I started it just over a year ago. So it's called Yard of Random Books because I bought a three foot long shelf full of hardback books that were sold as decorative shabby chic items and the the idea was and the whole idea of the channel that I've drifted majorly from was to actually read the books it's like oh yeah they're sold for decoration let's just let's actually read them um, and I've been doing that and I'll put a playlist link down below to all the videos where that actually happened so that was the that was the whole idea and then you know I got immediately for all well, I can't not do some Garb August stuff so I did um, got involved in a, a booktube event I thought well, I, I like these events so I did other events and then pretty soon you drink the booktube Kool-Aid and you're doing TBRs and wrap-ups and what what else um, so I haven't done as much of the Yard of Random Books as I might have hoped to and I think after a year I've decided that's long enough for that project so I'm chalking it up as a fail or a partial fail so I only read about two-thirds of them and not wanting the dread of oh when I've got to read this these things I'm now going to unhaul the residuum so I'll just go through the ones that the ones I didn't get to and sort of say why I think I never never got around to grabbing them off the shelf and why they will go go to live on a farm unread. <laughs> so there was um, a John Steinbeck book in some sort of book club collecting edition. In fact, there were two of these. Yeah, two, two Steinbecks. So there must have been some sort of subscription library O Steinbeck where you would get them looking like this. Um, so, To a God Unknown, The Pearl and The Long Valley. Now, do I want to read John Steinbeck books? Yes. Do I want to read these John Steinbeck books? For some reason, no. I don't like the colour much. And the idea of this collector's set that's all that's left is is a couple of like leftover ones that just makes me feel a little bit sad you know as if somebody this this didn't happen but as if somebody had their hopes and dreams of getting every Steinbeck book and then having a nice shelf full and and then they only got two and gave up um so I think I'll put these back into the into the flow of the world um the amazing results of positive thinking so this set of books I bought included quite a lot of non-fiction and quite a lot of practical teach yourself training type things, including there's one of the teachers, a surprisingly mystical book about teaching yourself yoga, for instance. So finding um, what was a very popular self-help book is not too surprising. You know, why is this now junk it's probably still in print it was super famous Norman Vincent Peale's The Amazing Results of Positive Thinking and I did have an idea for this I thought well what I'll do is I'll read it at face value and I will live by its precepts for a period like a week or something but knowing that it's based on evangelical Christianity and knowing that I'm basically easily led I refer you to the previous comments about booktube events I did think, I, I felt scared that I might actually end up with a completely new, uh, dramatically changed and possibly um, radically um, countercultural view of the world if I actually put this into practice. So um, positive thinking will have to go and be, be thought by somebody else. Um, the Mastery of the Air, The Mastery of the Air. In the Great Achievement series. Now, this was from 1914, not the oldest book in the set, because uh, there were some from the 19th century. Um, it's a book about, about flight. Obviously, the time it was published, that was really early. Um, there's some, some illustrations, some technical stuff, some photographs. 
early planes. I mean, it's kind of, I do find it quite evocative that this was so, so early on in the time, you know, it's now commonplace that there are aeroplanes and people will fly through the sky. I remember my granny telling me the first time she saw a plane, she hurled herself onto the ground in fear because it was just, she had no concept of what it was or why it was there. Um, so uh, it is interesting, but it's just so tatty that it, I think it's lost all value, really. Um, I'll send it somewhere where they might be able to sell it. I think I wouldn't dare try to sell it myself because however many photos I put and however, however detailed I wrote the description, I could still imagine somebody like, well, the, why, why wasn't it new? Um, so, Mastery of the Air, Overmastered. This looks a bit like a Reader's Digest condensed book, but it's actually um, Nana by Emile Zola in a series called 20th Century Classics. Again, do I want to read a famous realist novel? I don't not want to read it, but do I want to read this one? Again, from a now sadly incomplete library of, of classics. I kind of feel if I was going to read it, I'd probably just read it on a Kindle or something like that. Or if I was going to read it like super seriously, like for sort of academic reasons, I'd probably want an edition with some notes or something. So Nana, no, no. Uh, Murder in Vienna by ECR Lorak is a detective story, part of the Mystery Book Guild. So again, like a lot of these, it's book club, book club edition, lots of which end up in second hand. Um, apparently, the, the ECR Lorak wrote many, many whodunits, and this was like number 42 in a series. Uh, so would I read a, an A book by ECR Lorak? I probably would. Um, but I probably start a little bit earlier than, you know, number 42. Um, what else is going to, yeah, philosophy textbook. Again, nothing against philosophy textbooks. Uh, oh, it used to be part of the college library. Uh, but it's uh, by e. RJ Hurst, professor, professor of logic, University of Glasgow. You know, you, you, you'd read a more up-to-date book if you wanted to get a handle on philosophy, I think. So that's going to have to go. Typey by Herman Melville. I think this is a, um, you know, once owned by W. Fry. A narrative of four months' residence among the natives of a valley of the Marquesas Islands. Or A Peep at Polynesian Life by Herman Melville. Classics book club, book club again. Um, I think I've read Moby Dick. If I was going to read more Herman Melville's, perfectly possible, but I'd probably be getting through quite a lot of Melville before I got to this one. So sorry about that. That peep will have to wait. And finally, again, another one where it's old, it's quite pretty, but it's just too tatty for... Um, serious use um, you know, unless I learned to restore books. Um, Herbert Van Loon gives us his... Hendrik! Hendrik Van Loon gives us the story of mankind. Uh, I read up on this a little bit. I think he wrote it for his um, kids or something. Um, and he was obviously a, one of these kind of celebrity experts of times of yore. Uh, lots of other mankind stuff. Um, Van Loon on the air, um, Ancient Man, um, some nice little drawings, yeah, not against it, but um, what are you going to do? You can't read everything. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think this would probably be good for what it's intended for, you know, atmospheric looking hey, look, some books kind of stuff to go on the, the shelf of a, of a pub or whatever. So I'm afraid, like I say, just chalking it up as a pars partially completed project. Um, but I did think, well, what did I really enjoy out of that, the ones I did look at? 
Um, and there's lots. Um, I won't sort of go over uh, which ones were my favourites, but um, you know, it was it was it was fun, and it got me into BookTube, and I discovered some great things. Um, you know, actual book, books I really enjoyed reading. Others I thought were funny or or interesting. Uh, but one thing I really liked, and also that gave rise to a video that's still quite popular, was. Um, Reader's Digest condensed books. <laughs> so there were a couple of those in the in the set uh, that I did read, uh, and that's something I would never, never have deigned to read in in normal times. You know, because it's like, well, if you like books, you're going to read the whole thing, um, and also the the books they choose to to, to condense probably aren't generally speaking the sorts of things I would I would go out of my way to read so because of that I did enjoy the ones I did read so I was thinking if I want a successor project to Yard of Random Books something to weave into the weave into the fabric of my presence on booktube maybe some more condensed books could be good so that leads us to a little bit of an unboxing of you know it's not uh it's not some sort of space cooler uh, I don't think it's and should point out to a torrent of correspondence came in about me wielding some um, scissors on the last unboxing in a dangerous way. So the way I'm going to wield this scalpel will be pretty safe. Um, with that scalpel, Eugene. <laughs> Okay, let's away see. from you, cut away from you. Oh, there. I see, that's the idea, that's is it? That's the idea. Can I go running with it afterwards? <laughs> no. Um, oh, here we go. But aren't you supposed to, isn't it impolite? Or is that spoons? That's Soup handing, spoons. Handing someone a nice blade first is impolite. Okay, packing material. Yes, so Reader's Digest condensed books. Brief recap, Reader's Digest is a popular magazine, used to be like super popular, and the condensed books was a series of subscription only, direct marketed um, literature in kind of matching editions. And the idea is because for the busy read, busy person, you want to keep up with all the latest books, but you haven't got the time to read them all. So maybe you haven't even got time to choose books to read. So they select you some books, condense them down, cut out some of that unnecessary description, dialogue, etc. And give you the, the sort of nugget of them. And, and you can read books with used to be five turned into four. You know, you, you get. So you're up to date. No one's going to catch you out with a sort of, oh, what do you think of Lee Child? Well, yes, I have read that one because you've read condensed version. Um, but they ended up being like despised by secondhand booksellers because people bring them in thinking, oh, look at these lovely old books. And it's like, we don't want that. We don't want those. There's, there's too many of them floating around. Um, so again, they get sold by the yard. If you wanted just like red ones or green ones, you could go on eBay and buy the number of those or the, the volume of those that you want. So I quite like these earlier ones oh, where wow. they had uh, had dust jackets. Dust jacket. Blimey, that's they had five, five stories in them. Um, I've not read any of them. Um, ooh. Mm, Shirley Jackson, that the Shirley Jackson. Who's Shirley Jackson? Uh, a, an author of some oh, really okay. good stuff. Uh, yeah. So, oh. Anyway, he, here's my idea: either either picking a month to just read those as like a reading event for myself, or doing it as I go along is to, to pile into a whole load of these old condensed books um, and in any case these are the these are the pretty ones 
and because they're quite old, they're absolutely not stuff I've read. They've got evocative titles. Flamingo Feather. Good morning, Miss Dove. Appointment with Venus. My Crowded Solitude. The Cry and the Covenant. See, to me, those sound like, you know, in a book, somebody makes up some book titles <laughs> that aren't real. <laughs> they, they sound like those. The Cry and the Covenant sounds familiar. Yeah, they well, the, the words do. I was in the public libraries. See, The Desperate Hours, I presume that's the book on which the film is based. The Goat Boy. My Brother's Keeper. Two Soldiers. The Young Elizabeth. Is that My Brother's Keeper? Is that some... Um, Sorry, I'll stop firing questions off Howard Springs. No, My Brother's Keeper by Marcia Davenport. What were the reasons that drove the Holt brothers, handsome, wealthy, in the prime of life, into hiding in their once fashionable townhouse? What was the menace that led them to barricade themselves against the world behind tons of rubbish set with traps against possible intruders? Yeah. And what was the unpardonable, obviously, zombie apocalypse yeah. is, has to be the answer. Of course. Um, and what was the unpardonable wrong that made them enemies yet chained them together? This is a romantic fictional tale of a love and a hate that survived the years and of a triumphant new life that rose out of emotional devastation. Sounds unreadable. Sounds brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus illustrations. What? So I've always thought... Uh, Reader's Digest did a good job, even until late, very late in the day, they swapped to just illustrating them with like photos of the covers. But um, right. you know, a, a lot of the time they were commissioning new pictures, not loads. I mean, I know, I know the condensed book reader. You know, yes, we want helping along a little bit by making the book shorter. You don't have to give us pictures of everything, but um, <laughs> a few little illustrations to sort of. Um, Bring the thing to life, very nice. So uh, yeah, that's my plan. So I've got more of these than I'll ever want. They look pretty. So yard of random books is dead. Long live half a yard of Reader's Digest condensed books, I suppose. Um, so I'll decide how I do it. Like I say, could could be like pick a period, read nothing but these, and see how many I get through. Or just keep them ticking over and um, see see how many I get through in a year. Might be I'll be back in a year's time saying, well, that failed, that didn't work either. Um, struck me as something people could join in with because pretty much anyone can go to their nearest thrift shop, etc. You might find might find some of these, or maybe your your granny's got them in the attic. So uh, yes, thank you for watching that. Um, just to finish with random sentence from a sword and sorcery book. Over Guichard's fallen drawbridge thundered Juari's warrior lady, sword swinging, voice shouting hoarsely inside her helmet. Okay, back soon with something else. Ah.